first of all, let me ask, do we need to go to Jacob right now? Is he ready for us? Okay, well, he is, good. Uh, Jacob Soboroff is in Oakland County, uh, is Oakland University in Rochester, Michigan. Um, we spoke with him as he was setting up with a bunch of students who are gonna be watching the debate there at a watch party, and he's convinced them to stick around even though the debate ended, which itself <laughs> is a Herculean effort. Um, Jacob, take it away, how'd it go? Rachel, look at all the people. You guys, thank you very much for sticking around. I really appreciate you guys sticking around. Here's the, the, the green flags and the red flags. They did the whole thing and it was amazing and they don't have them any longer. So I'm gonna have them start with a show of hands. And I don't know if this is gonna surprise you. These are not undecided voters necessarily. These are voters who could very well tip the outcome of the election uh, come election day because they live in one of the most consequential counties in all of Michigan, Oakland County. It was 100,000, as I told you before uh, the debate, 100,000 vote swing from Trump to Biden in the 2020 election. Uh, Macomb County, one of the neighboring counties, is also a very important swing county here. Let's just start with a show of hands. Did anybody come into this debate and leave feeling differently than when they came in in terms of candidate? Raise your hand if you changed your opinion of the candidates because of this debate. Oh, really? One. Come on down, dude. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Very surprising. What's your name? Henry. Henry, what's going on? Okay, so you came in feeling what? Um, I felt like J.D. Vance would have been a, done a lot worse. I think he's very awkward. His, his other, like, public appearances have been very awkward. I'm thinking back to, like, the scenario in the ice cream shop where he just made it so awkward for the, per for the, for the employee and they don't want me on camera. Might have what been the think? donut too, right? Yeah, I just thought, well, like, why, can why, does, why can't he just be normal like the rest of us? Like, and that's how you felt coming out of here? I felt he did a lot better. He spoke, he, I feel the way J.D. Vance works is he works very well when he has a lot of preparation. This is a debate, he knows about it weeks in, ahead, weeks, weeks in advance. So he, he's able to repair. Like he prepared better here. I think he prepared very well. So one of the things, will you, will you do me a favor? These are for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, one of the things, guys, that I thought got the strongest reaction here was Jimena was talking about guns at the beginning of uh, the debate. And one of the strongest reactions here uh, I thought was interesting was, Rachel, what you were just talking about when J.D. Vance said one of the ways uh, ultimately that we can stop gun violence in this country is by having better, better locks on our doors. Uh, did anybody did anybody react? You're, you're laughing back here. There, no, you. <laughs> What's your name? Nora. What did you think when you heard J.D. Vance talk about that? Jimena was talking about how because of what happened uh, at one of your neighboring schools here, it's an issue that, that rings close to home. I thought it was ridiculous. I mean, the issue is guns. The issue is not better locks on doors. Uh, reproductive freedom is also something that got a big reaction in this room. And I saw a lot of green flags uh, go up when um, Governor Walls was talking about uh, how he wants to protect uh, a woman's right to make her own choices. I see you reacting strongly here. Really, ultimately, guys, what this is about is enthusiasm and whether or not in this state that had the highest youth voter turnout in the 2022 midterm elections, whether or not folks like this are going to be compelled to come out. These guys are compelled to stay here till 11 o'clock, 11, excuse me, 27 uh, on a school night. You know, you heard that answer. What did you think? Um, sorry, could you repeat that? <laughs> reproductive freedom. What did you think when you heard uh, Governor Walls uh, say he that he thought it was a, a woman's right to um, make her own choices? I completely agree with that. Like, I feel like that should be considered common sense almost, but it isn't. It's become such a heated debate for what feels like should be a no-brainer, and he just kind of voiced that. The other one was immigration, I thought, God, and you guys correct me if you feel like I'm misstating everything here, but on immigration, um, there, number one, there was a loud laugh in this room when those mics got shut off. Uh, <laughs> and that was, of course, around the issue of uh, the Haitians that are in Springfield, uh, Ohio, under the temporary protected status. Uh, J.D. Vance was saying, Senator Vance was saying that they were there illegally, of course, that wasn't true, the moderators pointed out, and they cut the mic. Um, but I also thought you guys in the room responded um, strongly uh, to the pushback on the point that um, uh, President Biden and Vice President Harris put forward one of the strongest and most conservative, actually, immigration bills uh, in recent history, and Donald Trump killed that bill. Did anybody, did that, did that, did that ring true? To, you're up here. Let me just come up here with you real quick. Um, you're nodding in your head. Yes. Hi, what's your name? James. Why was that something, James, that, that resonated with you? Um, it is true. Congress has power for these immigration policies, and it just keeps getting pushed back between presidency to presidency, which Congress does have power in these situations. It's really just forming a demonization of immigrants, which is such an issue. Uh, we see a lot of violence against immigrant 
communities. These are not illegal people. They come here undocumented for what other, whatever reason there is. And it's just causing more harm than anything. And we just need to push towards like true policy rather than like all these like talk points. I appreciate it, you guys. And I guess, um, you know, maybe the final thing that I just want to ask, um, we were talking, Marcus, about this, this constant criticism about the vice president not being able, uh, about the vice president being in office for these last, <laughs> see, he's, already, he's already upset about it. <laughs> the vice president being in office for all these years and not being able to make the change was the allegation from J.D. Vance. You said to me, I've been to high school civics class. Why did you say that? Because if anybody took high school civics class, they'd know what the vice president can do and what the vice president can do. I want to make a quick point. Neither candidate on that stage talked about what executive action they're going to take on day one to do what they want, nor were they asked, because they know that they can't. That's not how the vice presidency works. You don't get to do what you want. You do what the president delegates you to do. So that one day, Marcus is going to be uh, all of our teachers in civics class, guys. Um, I want to thank you all very much uh, for being here. And, and Rachel, just reiterate um, how important that these voters are, the enthusiasm that is here. Um, you can really feel it. Uh, and, and it's exciting to be here with all of you guys. We appreciate it very much. Uh, and I know they do, too, back in the studio. Rachel, back to you. Fate of the nation is in your hands from Madam President Jimena and to, to all of them. Very, very thankful. Um, very thankful to you, Jacob, for being there with them. It's inspiring to see them. Thanks, Rachel. All right. Thanks, guys.